As for mercy, based on the finished work of grace on the cross of Calvary, and the Lord will forgive and cleanse you with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and deliver you from the bondage of devil, his evil spirit, and all evil works. And as you go on to maintain purity of life, inside and outside, the Lord will always be with you. I will give you permanent victory and dominion over your enemies in Jesus' name. So, let us re-examine our life and ensure that nothing is standing between us and God. There is no reason for you to be under. Are you hearing me? There is no reason for you to be a useless person. There is no reason for you to be suffering. There is no reason for you to be in abject poverty. Your God is alive. Do you believe it? I'm telling you, your God is alive. There is the living God. If you begin to live your life according to the will of God today, He will open new chapters for you. Do you believe it? Search your life. As I conclude now, I want you to take note. A Christian is not a sinner. And a sinner is not a Christian. If you're a backslider, if you're a compromiser, if you're a hypocrite, if you're a sinner, what the Lord is calling you today is repentance. Search your life. Renounce your sins. Renounce your evil ways. Amend your ways. The Lord will show you mercy. He will recover you. He will restore you. He will take over your cause. Are you hearing me? I want you to look at this place in the Bible. First John chapter 3 verse 8. I am sure that you are going home with victory and dominion today. First John chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Look at verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. My friend, verse 8 says, A sinner is of the devil, is not of God. Verse 9 says, That a righteous person belongs to God and does not sin. And if you are there right now, you are asking, What is sin? Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 17a. First John chapter 5 verse 17 eh, said, All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. Now listen to me. Anger is sin. Unbelief is sin. Hatred is sin. Lying is sin. Pride is sin. Selfishness is sin. Anger, I told you. Unforgiveness. Unbelief. That terrible sins. Take note. Strife, contention, bitterness, the terrible sins. Lusting after evil things in your heart, covetousness, is a terrible sin. Keeping malice, bitterness, all these things are terrible sins. Bearing grudge, confess them and renounce them. Message I've shown to you. I don't know the evil you are into. Envy, backbiting, murmuring, pursuing people, swearing with heaven and earth. Worshipping or making idol, having idol in your heart. These are wickedness. Masturbation. Lesbianism. Homosexualism. Adultery. Fornication. Abortion. Murder. Killing human beings. These are wickedness in the sight of God. Renounce them. Belonging to secret court or open court, marine court, witchcraft court, any kind of court, whether student court. Anything caught is in belonging to it is what? Terrible sin, wickedness, stealing, picking pockets, arm robbery, killing people, collecting the property, one chance, dealing in counterfeits. Confess these things and promise God no more. 419, duping black people, white people, cheating the government, duping the bank. Wickedness. Confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Going to the native doctors or the herbalists to make charms. Whether for prosperity, for protection, all that is wickedness and evil in the sight of God. Prostitution. Selling your body for money. It is wickedness. I don't know the evil you are into. Fighting and quarreling. Giving bribe and taking pride. Extorting money from people because you have a uniform or gun. Or a particular office. That's wickedness. Smuggling. is the terrible sin in the sight of God. Such you are alive. 
smoking cigarette, in their hand, cocaine, marijuana, snuff, taking it is wickedness. Even selling those things and working in tobacco company is wickedness. And if you are doing that, you must stop it today. You must promise God no more. They don't buy it for people. They don't work in Brewery. Drinking alcoholic, white member, brukutu, beer, hot drinks, 1% or half percent, selling it. Even keeping company with those people who are into such things, sin. Encouraging them in those things. You don't buy it. You don't work in Brewery. You don't work in tobacco company. And if you enter these things, confess them and renounce them. Message I'll be shown to you. I don't know the evil you are into. Now is an acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. All these women that marry and divorce their husband, and husband that marry and divorce their wife, the Bible said marriage is between a man and a woman. Marriage is for better, for worse. Marriage is until the dead do you part. And if you have left your husband, you must return back to your first husband. If you have left your wife, you must bring that to your first wife back. And if you are into polygamous marriage, your second wife or third wife, you must pack your bag and baggage it and go home because that man is not your husband. And if you are marrying them three, four, five, you must remove the second, the fourth, and fifth one because they are not your own wife. And mend your ways before it is too late. And if you are damaged people and don't do something evil, do your restriction and the Lord will show you mercy. I don't know the evil you are into. Take note. These women that put attachments and weaving and palming and painting and bleaching and jewelry and bango, earrings, it is abomination. You don't need attachment. You don't need palming. You don't need to paint your mouth or your hand or your leg or put extra finger or extra eyes. You don't need them. They are wickedness. You don't need a bleaching so that you can look yellow. So you become a yellow woman, a yellow man. It's wickedness. Why are you changing your body? The way God made it is very wonderful. You don't need to dress so that people will see your chest or show your body and see your inner wear and see your inner body. You don't need to do that. You must cover your armpits, cover your tummy, cover your waist, cover your laps. You don't need to cut your dress left, right, front and back so that when you are going on the road, they will be flying up and men will be clapping for you. You don't need to cut it to become too short so that they will see all your laps. Because you're walking in back, you're walking... They will ask you to make a short turn so that your body will be attracting customers to them. When do you combine prostitution and the punk work? It is abomination. You need to cover your dress very well. Let it come down to your leg. If you be a Christian, some people that, listen, many people are busy in this name Christianity. Some people travel outside the country, start wearing trousers. And yet, the Muslim people will travel outside with their hair covered and with their eye covered and face covered their leg. Stop deceiving yourself. How are you now? Better than them when you don't cover your body and they expose your body and wear trousers like a man, which the Bible says is abomination. If you're among those young men that are making their hair because you see some preachers, then they make their hair hairdo. And you want to be like them, you want to go to hell. You don't need the jet coil, you don't need it at all at all. You don't need the permit, you don't need attachment, you don't need even a scattered hair. Or plating your hair. It is abomination in the sight of God. A man plating his hair. Have you ever seen a man plating their hair? And you think it's a way of life? The Bible calls it a fibulet. Those who are trying to be like women. It's their wickedness. It is sin. And if you're a woman and you're putting on trousers or men dresses, that is wickedness. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, he said, A woman should not put on that which pertains to a man, and a man should not put on that which pertains to a woman. All that do that are abomination to God. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. When you go to check Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 5, talking about when they are spoiled, what shall they do? Paint on a man, paint him. And then 4 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. It's talking about those who are born in the heavens and doing all those things. You don't need them at all. At all. I mean, their ways. Be a Christian and a Christian indeed, and it shall be well with you. I don't know the evil you have done. If you want to have victory, permanent dominion, if you want to have complete uh, deliverance from the hands of the enemy. And permanent victory, permanent dominion over the enemy, then you must keep yourself away from iniquity, from sin. You must repent and renounce your evil way. The Bible made us understand in John chapter 3, verse 16. Please, let's read the Bible now and pray. John chapter 3, and verse 16. The Bible said, For God so loved the world, and gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. But the world to him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth on him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten of God. 
and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because the deeds were evil if you can repent of this evil deed today and surrender to Jesus salvation will be given to you for in John chapter 19 verse 30 Jesus said it is finished and that is the sacrifice of sin no other person can pay it for you no other person that can, you know, that offer such sacrifice for you. Christ has offered it once and for all. And said, it is finished. And said in John chapter 14 verse 6, He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Only through him we can be reconciled to God. In John chapter 10 verse 10, He said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you will receive Christ today, He will give you abundance of life, eternal life. According to the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23, it says the wages of sin is dead. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you receive Jesus, it will give you eternal life. And so, amend your ways. And give your life to Jesus. Look at John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as receive him, for them give you power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. If you receive him today, he will give you that power to become the sons of God. And if you believe on him today, he will give you that power. And with that power, you will live a victorious Christian life. Without that power, you cannot live Christian life. Because the Bible said in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. It is only when you are in Christ, you can live a new Christian life. All things will pass away, all things will become new. You have power to overcome. And so, all what we need to do today is to come to Christ. For he said in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 20, he said, Come unto me. All is eleven and heaven and I will give you rest. I don't know what you're looking for. He said in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, but seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness. And all those things will be added to you. If you will come into the kingdom today through Jesus Christ, whatever you are looking for, deliverance, dominion, victory, and all those problems that are there in your life, as you come to the Lord today, He will deliver you from all the problems. He will give you authority, power, dominion over those principalities and powers. You will rule over them. You will give a command and they will obey you. You will speak and heaven will give you a word of attention. You will pray and your prayers shall be answered. Today, God will do it for you. In Romans chapter 10 verse 13, He says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As you call upon the Lord now, salvation, freedom, deliverance will be your portion. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will give you all your needs. Are you ready for the prayer now? Rise up on your feet. Pray. As you give your life to Jesus, you'll cry out. I said, Today is my deliverance day. What is happening to me? Why not cry to God of heaven and say, God, deliver me? Why not pray and say, God, I'm sorry for every unrighteousness and faithfulness in time past. I repent with all my heart and pray with all your heart. I want you to say this word after me, Almighty God. I come before you in the name of Jesus. Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. All my sins I confess to you. And Lord, I promise you, I will never continue on them anymore. From today, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me. And he was buried. And on the top there, he rose again for justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my hands away from my heart. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name we pray. A Father in heaven, I present my people before you. But it is never a way that any soul should perish. Whatever they have committed against you, known and unknown to them, in your Lord, remember mercy. Every power, every yoke that makes them to do evil, by anointing, I break that yoke. Lord, it is written, for the Son of Man is going to seek and to save that which was lost. Behold my people, behold your daughters, and behold your sons. For that, touch them. For they touch their heart. Turn them from the power of darkness to the power of the living God. 
from today, I claim that spirit that sold the body for Jesus. I pray cancel the name in the book of death. Write them in the book of life. Give them power to say no more in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Receive their salvation in Jesus' name. It is done. It is done.